As we talk to IT professionals today, they face data centers that look very similar to this. A mixture of uh, different platforms like VMware, Oracle, Microsoft SQL, uh, a, a, a huge host of uh, storage systems from EMC, NetApp, and IBM. Uh, even if the brands are the same, a lot of times the storage systems underneath them don't necessarily talk to each other. And then of course, a variety of backup solutions. So how do you manage all this and make sense of it and be able to proactively plan and organize uh, this infrastructure? Joining me on the light board to talk about this is uh, Van Simons. He is with Clear Technology. Van, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. Glad to be here. So, uh, Van, take me through this. Uh, you know, obviously, what we're looking at here on this uh, little box that I didn't mention is uh, storage resource management, and that's sort of the the uh, holy grail here. What what are some of the goals uh, for storage resource management? Well, listen, there's listen, there's a lot of challenges here, as right. you just said. All kinds of information in every one of these devices is collecting it. And of course, it's not in a format that is particularly useful or shareable with all the other formats. Right. So SRM, why we came up with SRM, right. is, and I'll just write that right here, why SRM, and you'll have to, you know. So what are we trying to do with SRM? So with SRM, we're trying to make a sense of all this information so we can make decisions, generally speaking, and run our business better. Okay. So it's all about, I have to handle diversity, all these different brands. All these different brands. Yep. I have to handle it in a way that I'll call it operations. Okay. So I need to be able to track and take action if I find issues and where is the issue? Right. Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? Whatever it happens to be. And I think part of it is also uh, sort of correlating this information because VMware is going to uh, report its problems differently than say EMC. Exactly is right. right. So then just putting all this information together is, is really a key aspect of this. Right? Putting it all together and I think for two reasons. One reason is operations and the other one is what I would call planning. Oh, what a concept. Um, we can do that in the data center now? So this is, this is where I can plan ahead and see, as you just said, right. how something in VMware is affecting something in storage and vice versa. Uh, and probably the last one is risk mitigation. All this stuff is all going on at the same time, and so I need to be able to manage this to avoid outages, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to have any unplanned events in this environment. Right, I, I used to say downtime isn't an option, and now it's just interruption is right. an option. Right? Like users, they equate slow performance with downtime, right? right? You know, it's just a different world, right? right? So the goal of this is really, is needed. Yeah. All these things are needed. The challenge is the execution and the implementation. Right, and well that kind of sets up, I think, sort of the next point of conversation here is, it, you would think with all of that there that everybody would have SRM and it would be this this huge success story, but it's really kind of tripped and falled a lot, hasn't it? Yep. So, so what are some of the reasons that SRM hasn't really got out of the gate? So what we find with our customers, I'm not judging this to the general industry, we find with our customers, I'm just going to take a moment and write a couple of things. Okay. The challenge here is I have all this diversity. Right. So I'm going to say why, why not SRM? Hopefully you can read that. First of all, it costs a lot of money. Um, generally speaking, it's not just the product, right. it's the people. Yeah. Just as complex, and every single time one of these things needs to be upgraded, et cetera, so it's, co so it's costly, it's complex, mm -hmm. it doesn't scale, and it finds problems, not solutions. Ah, well there's a so, big one. So, I know a problem, and sometimes I know the problem is here, but I might not know how, it how it's affecting here, and all those kinds of things. Right, and I, and I think that what I see a lot of times here is that, that, that this cost is so great that you're almost encouraging the, the IT professional to do it wrong, right, because it, it, it's just so expensive. Yes, and as you've said before, I've heard you say this before, the challenge is so great, people just say, oh, screw it, I will just buy more stuff right. rather than try to manage it. So what happens is, the IT in infrastructure is managing the customer, not the reverse. Yeah, and we almost reward bad behavior, yes. right? because it's just easier, literally, it actually is easier given that cost and this complexity to just, and, and I think actually I want to dive on, on this too, the, the problem thing, if, if you're not helping them solve problems, if you're just saying, hey, the patient is bleeding, good luck. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it, no matter how much you spend here, if, if it could solve the problems, you would actually feel better, right? Right, exactly right. So. I, I know that you guys have sort of launched this concept of SRM as a service, which I find very intriguing. Why don't you talk a little bit about 
what that is and how it sort of bridges the gap between the two here. Yeah, so let's just assume we, we need this. So basically what you're going to try to do is eliminate all the why nots with SRM as a service. So talk about what SRM as a service does for us. So SRM as a service. And I'm going to make these little A's. Okay. Is all the things this is not. Okay. So it, it is lower cost. So it's all the opposites. It is lower complexity or I'll even call it simplicity. Not just lower complexity. It scales, and it's focused on solutions, not problems. Okay. Which is what, at the end of the day, the customer wants answers. Okay. Not the, not that. Now, what this is is remove this. So we're getting rid of the on-prem. Get rid of the on-prem. Okay. There's lots of challenges with this. I got to keep it up to date. Somebody's there's care and feeding involved, etc. What if we do it and put it in the cloud? And then we just hook this in here. Okay. And that way, whatever we do here, we can upgrade, we can keep all the complexity out of the data center and deliver all of these things. We've now reduced the cost, made it simpler, and all of the challenges happen out here. Okay. And the customer doesn't have any work to do in there. So you guys are managing all the issues there. And, and I think that's a really good point because one of the things that, that uh, I think people forget is this whole environment, every time anything changes here as far as an upgrade or a firmware change, anything, the SRM has to change with it, right? right? Okay, and so then you're running SRM as a service out here, and then what do I put on-prem at that point? You put a light VM just for data collection, okay. and all we do is set intervals to when you want the data, and it just runs. Okay. No matter what happens, you can upgrade all these things, the, the VM is sending data, and all the changes that we have to do out here are all out here. So let's let's wrap up with this. The one of the things that I see a lot of these things is that it, it feels like it takes a long time to be able to justify the investment. What's your guys' time to value once you get a customer here? Here's the amazing part. Okay. We do these return on investments and those kind of things with customers. One to two months is the payback. We're up and running in, generally speaking, one to two weeks. Okay. And our customers have said, we've had one customer said, Van, in the first week I saved the whole year's worth of savings just by not being able to buy, or not having to buy storage, because you pointed out I didn't need it. I could use my storage more efficiently. And then the other thing is, you know, we talked about lowering costs, and I, I get nervous when uh, we say that because some, everybody says that, yep. right? So give me, I, I, obviously I know every environment's different, so heading a hard number is kind of hard, but what do you typically see as a percentage of savings? Uh, of savings in storage uh, in, or in, or in general? Solutions. Oh, we're generally half to a third the price of another solution. Wow. We're generally up and running in half to a tenth of the time. Wow. And generally speaking, what we found from our customers is, Van, you gave me insight in the first week of using the product wow. that I didn't know. One of the things we've tried to do, we design our product from the end user in. So it's not that we don't, we get all the data, but we actually spend time with our customers and to say, what's the decision you want to make? What's the data then that you need? Let me present the data you need to make the decision. Sometimes the problem in this environment isn't all the data, it's how do you present it in a way that helps facilitate a decision. Makes perfect sense. Van, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So there you have it. If you're looking for a way to get SRM implemented, I think we make a clear case that it's, it's, it's a must have nowadays, but these problems are, are real. SRM as a service is a really unique way to resolve these uh, challenges that we see with the typical uh, SRM environment. If you want to learn more, click on the link below, and that'll take you to a on-demand uh, presentation that uh, I did with Van's colleague, Phil, uh, on exactly uh, what SRM is. Uh, it's a much more detailed presentation, and uh, hopefully you enjoy that as well. For now, though, I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Have a great day.